Hey guys and welcome back to another mod spotlight. I'm Illusion like usual and today we're going to be talking about big reactors by Erroneous Beef. Uh, this mod is fairly new but uh, definitely becoming one of my favorite mods out there. Uh, this mod centers around a multi-block power generation uh, similar to a nuclear reactor. So let's jump right in. So let's talk about world gen. So you're going to find this uh, yellow right ore break it with anything greater than a iron pick and the best way that I found to process it is through the thermal expansion setup just go ahead and pulverize it down and then send it through a redstone for furnace and you're gonna get yellow room ingots um, also should say for the sake of this uh, mod spotlight I am using the FTB monster 1.6.4 mod pack because I needed some extra mods and I didn't feel like uh, doing this shelf by itself. Also should say this is version um, 0 0.3 so this is for versions higher than that. Um, so, okay so let's get right into it. So we talked about world generation we'll come back to this cyanide reprocessor. So let me, I've built a couple different um, just mock test um, reactors to show you. So we're so this one right here is my favorite design that I found when I first started messing with big reactors. It's a seven by seven by three tall. So let's talk about the components of to make up a multi-block reactor. So you're going to have a reactor casing which is graphite bars, iron, and the yellow room. Um, since I have reactor uh, craft and rotary craft installed, you can see it's also ore dictionary for those two. So you're going to need a fair, fair amount of yellow room to get started with this mod. To make graphite, you're just going to simply smelt coal or charcoal to get graphite bars. So you're gonna, again, you're going to need a fair amount of that as well. To make reactor glass, Pretty self-explanatory uh, casing with two pieces of glass. Fuel rod, you can see right there, you're going to need at least one fuel rod per reactor, if not more. You have an access port, you can see the recipe there. The uh, access port will allow you to insert items and then extract items in. So let's say, for instance, since yellow, yellow room is the fuel for these reactors, this is a great automated way to automatically insert yellow room once the reactor needs it. Power tap, that's pretty self-explanatory. There's the recipe right there. That's how you're going to get your power out. A control rod, this allows you to adjust and customize um, your reactor based on what you need. We'll talk about that in just a second. And the last one is, of course, you have to have, to have some sort of controller. And so that's your reactor controller. There's also a few other ones that I didn't grab out of NEI, but you'll see them as a rednet port if you like using MFR to control these, a computer port if you're com like computer, and then a redstone port. I usually use a redstone port. Um, if you go back through my series, I'll show you a cool way to how to automate um, one, of the, one of these reactors with a redstone port. So let me show you my reactor that I've built that I've been using for a while. Now let me jump into creative so I can fly up there. So like I said, it's a seven by seven by three tall. I have a three by three grid of control rods and uh, the fuel rod setup. So this is the pattern that I use. And then I have liquefied ender all the way around from thermal expansion. And I'm using the liquefied ender as a, uh, a coolant buff. Uh, that's the best way to put it. So let me show you the output that I can get out of here. So here's your little GUI. You'll see your temperature. This is your output, and this outputs in flux per tick, so RF, uh, using thermal expansions API. Your fuel burn, and how um, you can see a fuel reactivity. So you want this to be 100%. Uh, the more, the higher your number, the higher percentage you have the less fuel burn. So it's making, making your multi-block more efficient. So I'll give this a run. So you can see it heats up pretty quickly. 
and you can see my output should stabilize right at almost 5,000 uh, RF a tick. So it should, yeah, it looks like it's stabling out at about 48, 4,800 RF a tick. So that's pretty decent. That's 486 MJs I tick from there. And you can see my fuel burn. It's pretty decent as well. So when I built this reactor, this was the best in size for not only fuel output and for uh, fuel burn, uh, fuel efficiency. So you can see how I set up here. I have a controller, uh, power tap out the front. I have a two access ports, one to insert the arm, and then one to extract. So the waste that this thing produces is called cyanide. What you can do is you can take two cyanite with a bucket of water to produce plutonium by using this cyanite reprocessor. So if I can grab two of those, I've already got this thing powered. You'll see it process through. It doesn't take too long. Come on. And this does have a configuration tab very similar to thermal expansions configuration. So you can kind of adjust what you would like in the um, output uh, the uh, output and imports. So this plutonium that I just basically reprocessed, I can use this for fuel again inside my reactor, just like that. So cool, it's a great way to kind of recycle, but you know you're losing a little bit since it's a kind of a two to one. And then I just have reactor glass all the way around the outside of it. So for comparison, so this one I showed that I used liquefied ender. So this one I built the exact same reactor, the exact same setup, except for I'm using water as a coolant instead of liquefied ender. So let's give you a go. And now you see I should cap out right at about a thousand. Um, I played with the control rods a little bit, but yes, this should be right about a thousand, anywhere from 900 to a thousand RF a tick, so 90 to 100 MJs. So there's a pretty significant difference between these two reactors just by using a different coolant buff, uh, four times basically. So that's definitely something to consider when designing your reactor. Now I will tell you this: there has no there has not been a perfect reactor design that I have come up with that um, meets all everything as far as fuel efficiency, high output, but not too resource intensive. So if you're coming to this video for, you know, hey, I want the perfect setup that's most efficient in all categories, I haven't figured it out yet. So keep that in mind. I've, this, I've done many, many hours of uh, trial and error to get where I'm at. I've also the red uh, look through a couple spreadsheets that I'll link below. So we've talked about those two. Now let's go ahead and build one so I can show you the building process. And I'm going to build a new design that I have not used before. And let's see what we can get out of it. So it's going to be another 7x7x3. Seven by seven by so that is 3, 6, 7. Too far. So I have my basic outline. Now these fuel rods have to be set on a reactor casing. They cannot put be placed on a reactor glass. So if you were considering putting reactor glass in your bottom of your reactor, that's fine. Just make sure it's not underneath a fuel rod. So I'm just going to do the whole bottom of reactor casing since it's really not that much more expensive than um, reactor glass. Okay, so that's my main body of my reactor. So I'll just go ahead and finish filling it in. Okay. So like I said, this is going to be a new design. It's one I have not built before, so I guess we'll see how it goes. All right, so this is going to be in an X pattern. I'll show, I should say that 
uh, when you're using your coolant um, buffs or way to cool it, you can also use solid blocks as well. Um, diamond, gold, um, they're not as efficient, but or it depends on what material is. Uh, basically in all of the big reactor mod when we're talking about this and when we start talking about turbines in the second segment of this video basically the higher end material it is usually the better it is and that's pretty much true with all Minecraft so I'm going to fill this in with glass first and I'll put a controller in here and a power tap here and not that go ahead and get this guy filled up with reactor glass so we don't have Fight Ender everywhere. And again, I don't know how long this video is going to be. There are so many variables to this mod. Um, this mod spotlight might be a little bit longer than um, my usual, but uh, there's lots to explain. So I'm just going to fill this up with Liquefied Ender. There we go. So now we have that set up. So be careful with liquefied ender because you have the uh, possibility of getting teleported. So it's good to be able to fly or something. So on top of all the fuel rods has to go a control rod. That makes sense, right? So I'm just going to put these down. Okay. And then I'm going to fill it up with reactor glass. Oops. So we'll, we'll fix that. No big deal. And you can you you could use uh, just regular casings in here if you wanted to, but I like the way the glass looks. So we have got that fixed up. So let's go ahead and put some yellow room in there. And already took some in. You can see that the fuel rods have fuel in them. We'll go into the GUI and you can see we're 100% here. And uh, let's give this a try. Okay, so looks like it's going to about 4,900, right at almost 5,000 RF a tick. So this is a, another, that's a very good design, just like mine. The, or the one I'm not I shouldn't say mine, but the one I've been using, uh, very very similar. Um, so cool. That's basically how you build a reactor from start to finish. All right, so let's get a little bit more complicated. So both, all three of these uh, reactors right here, we talked about, have been outputting RF. Let me show you this one other one right here. Um, I also built this pretty small one right here and this one has diamond blocks in it as a coolant buffer so let's give you a go so it looks like it's not even making 500 RF a tick so it looks like right at 46 47 MJ's for that one so you can see a small reactor can't output power, but you can see I'm just getting a significant increase by using these. Now I should also say that bigger is not always better in this mod. Uh, when you start getting to the bigger um, configurations of bigger multi-blocks, you start getting inefficient. So that's kind of the hard part of finding a good sweet spot between efficiency, fuel burn, power output, but you're not having this huge structure. So this is why I'm enjoying this mod because there's lots to play with and you can kind of customize it to what you need. Alright, so let's jump over here. So I have this, these two reactors are basically the same thing. The difference between these two right here, this one actually outputs steam. So this one's outputting 2200, just over 2200, millibuckets of steam per tick. Right there. And you can see the little internal buffer. And it's not putting outputting any RF at all. Versus this one is actually outputting RF. 
So the way I made this change is I have these coolant ports right here. There's a recipe right there, not too bad. So basically I have a extra utilities um, transfer node, liquid transfer node feeding in here, and then I have it exporting the steam. Now with this, I actually had to significantly upgrade it to get the water input. Um, I don't know what the exact number is, but I know 16 works. So it may be a little bit less than 16, but uh, you know, again, that's something you can play with. So that one's outputting 2,200 buckets of steam. So let me jump over here, and I have this a little bit smaller one. Uh, again, very similar. This is just a five by five by four with two, two tall fuel rod in there. Let's give this a go. And this one's outputting 800 millibuckets of steam a tick. So that's, that's still pretty decent. So that's 800, and this one was 2,200. I turn you off? Yeah, I turned you off. So what can we do with this steam? Well, one easy way to do it is if you wanted to run a steam dynamos from thermal expansion, you could run a lot of them. But with this new revision and new updates to big reactors, the mod author has included new multi-block turbines. So let me clear my inventory and we can start talking about turbines. Alright guys, I'm back. So I cleared all the inventory and uh, let's start talking about turbines, the multi-block turbines that are added with this uh, new update to the mod. So I went ahead and built one just so you can kind of get a good look at it as we talk about it. So let's talk about the components of the turbine multi-block. So you're going to need turbine housings which are iron, cyanide, and nether quartz. So remember, we got cyanide as a byproduct, as a waste product, from running these reactors. So you're not going to be able to even get into the turbines until you have used this um, reactor a fair amount. So... That's your, your recipe for your turbine housing. It's pretty similar to the reactor housing, but you just got to use a cyanide. So my recommendation is that you do not reprocess any of the cyanide through if you're planning on making a reactor. So, again, reactor glass, same as the other one. We have a turbine power port, just same as the other one, just using turbine uh, housings. Got a fluid port turbine rotor bearing this will be this will be probably the most one of the most expensive parts of the build and it uses these turbine rotor shafts okay we'll get that in just a second and then you have a turbine controller now this one you're going to need two pieces of plutonium so you actually will have to process at least two pieces just to make this so getting into this second step of big reactors to the turbine is a little more costly than the first step but you're going to see the payoff is much better and worth it. So then we have turbine rotor shafts, you have iron and cyanide, and then turbine rotor blades, which are cyanide and some iron as well. So that's all your main components to making a turbine housing. So let me read you something right off of, actually let me, we'll talk about the components. So we have a shaft in the middle, blades on each side, and at the back here, we have what's called coils. Now these coils can be made of any solid block that has value. Of course, the higher the value, the better output you're going to get. So basically this is acting as a coil to turn the rotational power into RF. You can use several different types of blocks. I pulled just a handful of them. Uh, flux Electrum, Gold, Diamond, Shiny or Platinum, and then the Enderium. Of course your Enderium is going to be your highest tier of um, blocks, so that's going to produce your most output, just like when we were talking about there the Liquid Enderium. So let's get into the GUI. You can see right now that I am outputting 5500 RF a tick. 
and this is at 832 R, um, RPM. So if you mouse over here, let me get rid of NEI. It says rotors perform best at 900 or 1800 RPM. So you, let's, we can call it low speed or high speed. So you see, see, I'm right at my low speed a target. And if you look very closely, you can see a very faint green line. Basically, that green line is giving me kind of a window to stay into to be most efficient. Um, you can see my steam, my energy buffer is already full because I've had it running. You can see my rotor efficiency is at 100%. And here's the tool tip. Rotor blades can fully capture energy from 25 millibuckets per blade. So basically if you are giving it more steam than you have blades to capture, you're going to be running EFIT, um, not efficiently. Now next, maxed flow. You can see I'm only giving this turbine 400 millibuckets a tick to get 5500 RPM. So Let's jump back over here. You remember this very small reactor that I made? This guy outputs 800. So if you think about that, this small reactor can run two of these and put out, what's that, 11,000 RF a tick. So let's run over here. This guy outputs. 2200. So you could run five of these if you had the materials off of that one reactor. So you can see that it can scale very significantly based on the resources you put into it and your output. So this steam that this thing runs off of is Forge Dictionary Steam. So could I have a Railcraft boiler? running this? Absolutely. And in fact, I'm doing that right now in my Resonant Rice series, where I have a fairly small low pressure boiler running one of these. So, that's just something to think about. Um, this kind of gets where there's not a lot of documentation on the turbines because there's so many variables. So let me read this from the change log for you. A multi-block turbine must be at least 5 by 5 by 4, so at least uh, 5 wide, 5 tall, and 4 deep. Okay? You can see how we made it right there. That's basically the shame. Alright, so extending straight down the rotor, you place the rotor blades, which we did. We talked about that it can capture 25 millibuckets of steam per blade. We talked about using the coil to capture power. Now here's where it gets kind of the tricky parts. The more metal blocks, the faster they will drain energy from the rotor to convert to RF. Now first, adding tons of blades, increasing rot rotor energy loss due to drag. So overbuilding rotor blades is a bad idea. Basically, if you have a whole bunch of rotor blades, but not enough steam, then you're going to be not efficient. Then the reverse is true as well. You want to figure out how much steam your reactor produced and build accordingly. Second, you need to figure out how many metal blocks you need to optimally capture energy from your rotor. A rotor op operates best at 900 or 1800, so too many or too few metal blocks will make your rotor too fast or too slow and will not operate at full efficiency. So let me explain what that means. So if I have too many coils, the drag is going to be too significant that I can't have the rotor system up to a high enough speed to give me a good um, output or have a good RPM. So this is where it gets kind of tricky and you have lots of variables. Um, and again, I have not seen really, you know, concrete. This is the be all to end all for turbine. So it makes it a little bit frustrating but a little bit fun at the same time. Um, I will leave a second link in the description as well for a uh, a Google spreadsheet that was put together that can kind of give you a little bit of um, kind of a point you in a good direction. Now I should also say that um, 
uh, for instance, I'm using I'm using this big reactor in my Resonant Rise mod pack. Resonant Rise has Metallurgy 3, so this does have cap uh, capability and support for Metallurgy 3 uh, blocks. And in fact, that's what I'm actually using um, in my coil is one of the Metallurgy 3 uh, blocks. So let's build one. And I want to build this um, very basically the same size, but we're going to tweak it just a little bit. All right, so we'll make it five. Let's see, that's four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, unlike the reactor over there, you can put glass on the bottom if you choose. That's totally up to you. So I'm going to do just like this. And then we'll start putting in some of the pieces. So I definitely want you to guys see how this thing is made because um, trust me, I I've made it wrong before. All right, so we can put let's see, let's put a my usual controller in the bottom left, and we'll put a power a um, power port there, not there, and then a turbine bearing has to be in the center of your of your multi-block structure right just like it is there so if I was using a system that was two fan blades in width then of course I need a bigger multi-block structure and this would have to be a little bit higher to accommodate the two blades here so basically this has to be in the center of your multi-block we'll just go ahead and fill you in Come up here, fill the roof in, and extra utilities one makes it go so much easier. And I'm going to, I'm actually on this one. I'm actually going to use a. Actually, you know, I'll do it. I'll do it legit. I won't use a steam turbine. I will do. Um, I'll show you how to how I normally do this. So I would use fluid ducts. And for the sake of argument, I'm going to use a creative portable tank, but normally you would just pipe it over from your reactor or if you had it stored in a tank. So I have a turbine port. All right, let's fill this in. Okay. I'll set that up in just a second. So there we go, we're going to have our turbine shaft, grab our blade, just stick it around here, and be careful because the hitboxes are a little bit bigger than you expect with this thing, so just uh, keep that in mind. Alright, so this one is four blades, so what I want to do is I want to do something a little bit different. I want. Right. I see, like I was saying, the hitbox is a little bit, a little bit weird, but they can make it work. All right, you can see that I did five blades, and I'm only going to run one coil. So let's do a. I haven't tried flux electrum yet. You know, let's maybe shiny. It's just shiny. Or what would you have the most of? Gold, that, shiny. Okay, let's do diamond because, you know, this is 72 diamonds worth of material and that's, you, you might be able to have that. And I want to kind of compare it. Alright. So basically, that diamond is going to act like our coil. And, uh, you know, we can test this out a little bit on camera. Alright. 
Alright. Okay, so I just discovered something that um, you can't use diamond blocks as a coil. So just learned something there. I, uh, I, you know, built this and then got an error, and so can't use can't use that. So let's try gold. Um, all right. So I'm gonna set this up. I'm going to show you how I set up. So I use fluid ducts mainly because of the flow rates that you can get out of the fluid ducts, which is I believe is 360 um, millibuckets a tick. So grab a servo. There we go. Servo's installed. Just give you a little whack. Which I meant to do steam. So, mess that one up. I was going to show you something else with water, but uh, I'll show you that in just a second. Let's get you installed. Give you a whack. And steam. And steam bottle, where are you? There you are. Okay, so let's give this one a try with the gold. And I uh, will pause the camera until it's, it has spun up. Alright guys, so this is, thing is still spinning up, but you can see I'm not going to try to push this one to the high speed RPM, and we're going to see where we can get it. But, you know, right now it's not looking like this setup using gold is very ideal since we're only getting about a thousand RF. So... I built another frame and uh, let's see what we can do with this one. So this one I want to try shiny. Yeah, let's try shiny. I think shiny is towards the high end of the material base. Oops. For coil. All right, so there we have 16 blocks of shiny or platinum ingots. So let's give you a try. So I use this same setup, the four blades, two coil setup that I did in the first one with the endurium. And this one, uh, I'm using again, we're using a five and one coil. So this is going to try to basically push this to a high speed setup. And these are both going to be the low speed, they're both the 900 RPM. All right, so you can see we're at our target, so I can actually start dropping this down. This should this should be right around 400 as well, maybe 500. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, so you can see we're right around three, right under 400 millibuckets a tick, and we're getting right about 2,000 RF. In fact, I think I can, I think I could tweak this a little more to get that, since we're just out of that green area. So if we could maybe slow down that rotor just a bit. Yeah, come on, slow down. There we go, we're starting to lose. So you can see this one even has a much lower millibucket tick draw than some of the other ones. So that could come in handy um, to do like a smaller setups that run fast but have a low um, steam consumption. So this is kind of the fun part of these turbines, is to play with them and try to figure out what's the best setup for what you have. So let's see where we're at here. 
Oh, you're already at. Oh, wow. So we're actually outputting 8,000 RF. But we're at the high speed setting. So I don't know how much um, steam we're using. So let's drop. Let's drop you down to more reasonable. Let's drop you down to 500 millibuckets. Let's see where you settle out at. Let's see what happens when we come back to the 900 mark. And then I'll bring you right back. Alright guys, I'm back. So I want to show you a few things that I've been kind of playing with and testing here. So this can kind of help you as well. So again, remember this is a, you know, a kind of a trial and error. Again, I'm going to give you a spreadsheet that kind of points you in a good direction, but I want to show you something. So look at this. My efficiency has gone to 55% as I try to push this thing hard to take it to a high, high RPM. Now if I drop this guy down, you see my efficiency goes up by almost, or basically 20% bring in the RPMs down but we're also bringing our RF down so this is again a lot of the kind of the trade-offs and finding that sweet spot that really suits what you what you want to do so if I bring this guy down to let's bring him down to whatever a hundred percent efficiency is which I'm guessing is probably around the 350 range since that seems a lot, seems, seems, okay, so we'll maybe we're closer to 400. The 300, 350 to 450 range seems a lot of where the, a good sweet spot for our flow rate when we're uh, talking about a low speed uh, turbine. So, now, I want to do one more thing before we kind of recap. I want to push this guy up as hard as we can. I want to see what the max I can get out of this. Now our efficiency is going to suck. That is... I have no doubt of that. But I just really want to push this thing hard and I want to see what we can do. So we're coming out of that green area for our, you know, being efficient at 900 RPM. So we'll come back and check on that. So I I've, I've hope you've enjoyed this spotlight on Big Reactors. Big Reactors is a very cool mod. It gives you a lot of customization, a lot of flexibility, a little bit of frustration because you're trying to find that good thing. But this is also kind of fun. This is, you know, a lot of what modded Minecraft is, is finding cool new toys, tweaking them, playing with them, and basically figuring out all the ins and, ins and outs of each of them. Um, I am... I was very excited to see this uh, this update, especially with the turbine, because not a lot of people have any information on the turbine. Um, the wiki isn't even updated um, for the FTB wiki is not even really updated for at all for this mod, and the Technic wiki is a, has a little bit more information, but uh, information is still a little bit scarce for this whole mod in general. Um, one question I do see a lot is, how do I get the steam in there? Like I said, I use fluid ducts from thermal expansion. Keep in mind that you may have to have more than one fluid, a turbine fluid port. Keep in mind, that, that may have to happen. They're not that expensive, so if you are having trouble seeing the flow rates that you're looking for, Throw another fluid duct in there and another um, port. See if that'll fix your problem. It may or may not. It depends on what your issue is. And keep in mind, you can take these bigger. I've built a few in my test world that were, um, you know, these are five blocks wide. I've built one that's seven blocks wide and, and did two turbines. It didn't go well for me, I can tell you that, because I couldn't get a very fast um, RPM out of them. Um, again, this mod is by Erroneous Beef. Uh, join this mod. If you're new to my channel, stop out, stop by and see what some other things I have going on. I'm doing a couple other series. And um, I guess we'll kind of finish off with this guy. You can see he's slowly climbing up, but 
I'm giving that guy a lot of steam. So uh, I'll bring you back right when this, see if it, what this guy caps out at. Alright, so it looks like we're not going to do much better with this setup. And I think the main problem with this setup right here is my efficiency is so horrible that I can't achieve this higher RPM. So I'm probably going to get stuck right around the 1500 RPM. It's, it's barely ticking up. So that means it's pretty much at the end of its um, RPM increase. So maybe with a uh, longer setup, maybe with that has more blades to increase my efficiency, I could achieve this RPM that I'm looking for. And I imagine we probably get probably 10,000 RF a tick. I don't know. It's uh, it's very possible. Let's see something real quick. This guy was, I think he was right around 4,000 at the low speed. Is that about right? But anyway, I ho hope you, again, I hope you've enjoyed this mod spotlight. I, I've enjoyed playing this. I've got to learn a few things as well. Um, in your actual game, the rotor blades actually spin a lot quicker than they do in this recording. It's just the recording software. I've seen several people have issues with it. It just looks like it's going super slow. Um, and it actually is it's a fair amount quicker than that. Um, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Send me a message. If you're new to my channel, stop by see what some other things going on. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you guys on the next one.